ghost writer has well said that read, 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 read everything, trash, classic, good, and see how they do it. Just like a carpenter who works as an apprentice and studies the master, read. You'll absorb it. Then write. If it's good, you will find out. If it's not, throw it out of the window. Namaste. Welcome back to our channel, Knowledge. Today, we have a very special guest on our show, Dr. Janmajoy Gupta, sir, who is an architect urban planner with more than 17 years of industrial and teaching experience. Presently, he is Associate Professor and Dean Research in School of Planning and Architecture, Vijayawada, an institute of national importance under Ministry of Education, Government of India. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. So, uh, first of all, congratulations, sir, that your book, um, Housing, Climate and Comfort, has been published. So, congratulations for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes. Okay. So, let's begin with that. When did you realize that you should write a book? Uh, you see, uh, uh, I've been teaching this subject for about uh, uh, 11 years now, okay. Uh, climate responsive architecture and climate and built form and climate and built environment. And over these 11 years of teaching, I've been preparing notes, I've been making uh, PowerPoint presentations. Then also at the start of my teaching career, I was involved in PhD research, my own doctoral research. And when I was doing my own doctoral research, uh, it was on similar lines. It was on passive design strategies and energy efficient architecture and climate balanced architecture. And I was doing a lot of research myself, going to a lot of uh, books, journals on it, documentaries and everything. So all through these years of teaching and research, I realized that uh, this subject is essentially taught at second and third year levels, BR, Bachelors of Architecture. And that at that level, uh, they don't have uh, books which cater to their own needs. Sometimes a lot of good books do exist, but some of those books are uh, a bit um, difficult to comprehend for those young students. So that's when I decided that um, up and above all the material that exists in the field, I'll make uh, write something that is easy to comprehend from a student's point of view and that the students can understand at that level when they have not known everything, they are at still the learning stage. So that is when I first realized that I should put all these together, uh, piecemeal things, and uh, uh, as per the standard uh, syllabus followed by Council of Architecture for Climate and Build Form, a uh, generalized and uh, write a book. That was when the first thoughts came. Okay, so yeah. who inspired you the most to write this book? Yes, uh, as I was telling you uh, in response to the previous question, uh, there were uh, a lot of books that I uh, went through when uh, teaching, when doing my own research, PhD research in my own uh, topic, related topic. And a few books uh, really caught my attention. Like uh, there was one book by Quenix Berger, uh, which is a manual of tropical architecture. And then there was one book by Zoccole on building science. Uh, so all the, these books, uh, I really inspired me and on top of that also, I saw a lot of architects um, who built their, uh, designed their buildings uh, following climate responsive principles, uh, and, but they were not documenting that to that extent. They were do, uh, utilizing those principles, they are not documenting and also a lot of students who were uh, doing uh, their own uh, studio design projects and competition designs, they were coming to me uh, for suggestions and they were also trying to utilize these principles. So all these things combined together inspired me to uh, write a book uh, in which I would uh, actually summarize all the points and uh, 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 so that that book can act as a ready reference for all those students who are wanting to um, uh, in, invite climate responsive uh, design features in their architecture and act as a ready to use guide not only students even architects those who would be liking to practice after studying so yeah 
that is what was the main inspiration okay so how long does it take you to write this book actually i began writing this book uh, uh, in uh, 2018 uh, 18 so it's been about three and a half years as on date uh, finally when it got published of course in between uh, there was the covid pandemic so that slowed down things a lot as you know the covid pandemic yes. affected the entire nation and in that period of time uh, we lost some time because uh, nobody was operating in full strength so that uh, delayed it a bit, but otherwise, uh, all together, it uh, took about all these three years, three and a half years, uh, including the pandemic. And uh, it involved, uh, because it involves a lot of things. There's a first draft, then there are corrections, and then so finally, finally, things keep evolving. So it's a continuous process. Uh, normally, it should take around two years minimum, two and two, anything between two to three years. It got extended a bit because of pandemic situation. Okay, so um, where did you get your information or ideas for your book? Uh, I've been teaching this subject uh, for a long time now and uh, as a result of that uh, to prepare for the classes also I've been handling a lot of related material matter. My PhD doctoral research was also on the same lines uh, and on similar subject, uh, similar area. So I've been uh, going through a lot of journals, a lot of books, a lot of written articles, research articles. Uh, further to that, even in my industrial tenure, I have been involved in green building documentation. Nowadays, we have uh, a special stress on green buildings, you know, energy efficient, climate balanced green buildings, sustainable buildings under uh, Indian Green Building Council. And at that time, also, I was going through uh, their manuals, the IGBC manual. I'm also an IGBC accredited professional, which I happened to uh, become in my industrial period only. When I was in the industry, I cleared that exam and um, became that. So, so it was all uh, part of that process. And all these things, all these information that came into me, uh, came into my brain, helped me uh, to write this. Okay, so I'm sure that you must have done research before writing this book. Okay, so uh, what kind of research did you do for this? Yes, uh, uh, the, uh, this research I can categorize into three uh, categories. First, the research that we as teachers do for our day-to-day -day class taking. You know, I've been teaching now for around 11 years and each class uh, requires some um, research on our part. Uh, so and it's an ongoing process. So uh, we read materials. We uh, we try to make uh, PowerPoint presentations, which can uh, put across our message to the students very easily. So all those in in the taking regular classes, we do a lot of research uh, because if we don't do the required homework, now we can't deliver in the proper desired way to the students. That's the first part of the research. So it's an ongoing process. Second part of the research was during my uh, doctoral thesis, which I began in uh, April 20, uh, to, uh, 2012, and I ended it in uh, 2015. I finally got the degree after the evaluation in 2017. So in that time also, now, uh, in, as part of my ongoing PhD research, which was based on a similar subject area, you know, like passive design strategies and climate balance architecture, vernacular architecture, how it can be climate balanced. That too, PhD involves a lot of rigorous research. We have to go through a lot of literature and write down the summary, write down the findings of the research. Uh, so in that process also, I went through a lot of lot of uh, journals, uh, established, well-established international journals. I had to publish myself also. I have good publications, including Taylor and Francis and uh, uh, Elsevier. So I, I, that was part of the research as well. And another part of the research was uh, uh, when I was in my industrial tenure, when I was uh, doing the green building ratings uh, as part of my design job, uh, and I was documenting the same. That time also I went through IGBC manuals, Indian Green Building Council manuals and Griha manuals. And when I was going through them, I was uh, understanding how uh, we can create buildings which are sustainable, how we can create buildings which are climate balanced in each, uh, in their uh, characteristics. So it was, it, it, it's, uh, it was all, uh, all a mixture of all these different types of research that I did. So you have done a great research for this book, no? 
Yeah, we have to. Otherwise, we can't even write up that book. Exactly. Or we can't do justice. Yeah. Research is the first step, actually, sir. Absolutely. We have to start from research and then we have to go on to uh, write. Because if you just start writing without doing the required homework, uh, it won't help the cause. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so how do you feel that this book is important? I mean, what is the unique point in this book? Yes, uh, this is an interesting question. You know, there are books on this subject. It's not that there are no books on this subject. There are books on this subject. But the thing okay. is uh, that uh, some of these books you know, are a bit uh, high, fund, uh, high fund, if you can say. You know, they are, because these, uh, the subject is essentially taught uh, to architecture students who are in their second or third year, right, at the undergraduate architecture course. So for them to understand all the very complicated concepts becomes a bit difficult. They would rather want uh, something which is uh, relevant to them at that stage, something that can they, that they can apply to their designs, right? Something that they can apply to their practical architectural studio work and when they start practicing. So based on that experience of mine of teaching them and trying to understand their mindset and telling, uh, 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 listening and responding to their queries that, sir, uh, these things are too difficult. Uh, is it even valid to us? Is it even relevant to us? So listening to all those and synthesizing their um, point of view, thinking about their perspective, I uh, thought that I'd write the book uh, from their point of view in the way that they are taught and that uh, in a way that's easier to comprehend. Second uh, unique point, USP of this book, I feel is that I have uh, highlighted the logical process of uh, finally uh, arriving at a climate responsive architecture in this book. You know, for arriving at a climate responsive architecture, we need to follow the following steps. First, study the climate and the microclimate of the region. Then understand how that climate affects the human occupant inside the building, which we uh, popularly uh, refer to as bioclimate. Then based on that bioclimatic analysis, which actually involves analysis of uh, certain charts, you know, uh, known as bioclimatic analysis charts, we finally come to the technological interventions which can lead to climate violence architecture. So in this book, I have made it uh, uh, particularly uh, stressed upon this logical sequence of studying the climate of a place, understanding the bioclimatic implication of that climate uh, for the occupant inside the building, and finally coming to technological and architectural solutions. So that is what uh, I would feel are the unique features of this book. To summarize, uh, easily understandable for students of uh, BR uh, level, bachelor's of architecture level, and following a logical sequence of narration, climate, bioclimate, technological and architectural intervention. Okay, so in this digital age, what do you feel is the continuing relevance of preference books like you have written this book? Yes, uh, you know, uh, books, uh, old is gold, uh, so books will never Absolutely. lose their relevance. As you were yourself uh, starting this interview with that introduction, uh, in which you uh, also said uh, something on similar lines. You know, uh, we, uh, whatever we are, uh, especially uh, till our generation at least, we, uh, in our college days, we uh, actually relied a lot on textbooks. And the experience of reading a book is altogether different. It helps us retain things much better. You know, uh, when we are reading something on screen, it, it can be much short-term memory rather than when we are concentrating, focusing, taking notes in an old-fashioned way. And those things tend to be retained more and for a longer time uh, in our memory. Uh, and on top of that, uh, books also have their relevance in, you know, books can explain a concept much more clearly, lucidly than uh, a single internet uh, uh, posting can. Because books are a comprehensive compilation of a lot of aspects related to that subject. So it's a single point reference. You have that book in hand, you can understand the basics. Whereas in internet browsing, you have to browse here, browse there for a single topic. Not one single topic can be found entirely in one uh, web page. So 
Now that way, always I feel the books have to be uh, relevant and we should ensure, especially the slightly uh, uh, older generation should ensure that the youngsters today don't forego this habit of reading books totally because that can have a detrimental effect for their future. Absolutely. So, thank you so much, sir. Thanks for your time. And yes, it was really, really nice talking to you. So, again, a very, very, uh, you know, heartly congratulations to you for your book. And uh, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you so much for your information. Thanks. Yeah, again. thank you. It was a pleasure on my part also to give this interview and uh, highlight my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone. If you want to know more about architecture journals, books, training programs, or similar kind of things, then do subscribe to yeah. the channel. Yeah. You mind if I just if I just put my book on screen once, no, just please, for the viewers please, to see? Please, yeah. please so. so here it is: uh, housing, climate, and comfort. Right. So I, I hope uh, those interested you'd like to uh, get to it. Yes, this is really, really a very, very nice book for the architecture students. And yes, so if you all want to know more about architecture journals, books, training programs, or similar kind of things, then do subscribe to the channel Knowledge because this is the right platform for you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.